Welcome to Tech Notice, my friends. This over here is the brand new 14th generation of Intel CPUs. And this right here is the 14600K. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Um, no, it's a 13600KS, more like. What are you talking about? That doesn't even exist. Well, yes it does, and you're holding it. Well, you've ruined my intro. What am I gonna tell them now? Uh, what about technotistore.com? Or the sponsor of the video? Cheeky beggar. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So what I've got here is the 14600K. And then we're going to be comparing this to the 13600K and a 12900K. These are roughly about the same price, between 320 to 380, something like that, between that, like that range, as well as a Ryzen 7700 X. So let's take a look at some of the specifications and then we'll see what's actually changed with the 14600K. So as you can see, I've got the 14600K, 13600K, 7700X and 12600K in here. And there was a big change between the 12600K and 13600K because there was a lot of cores added and a little bit of a boost clock there, quite a bit actually, of 400 megahertz. So now what I want you to focus on is the 14600K and 13600K. As you can see, the cores and the threads are exactly the same. 14 cores, 20 threads, 6P cores and 8E cores. The P cores have hyper threading in there as well. A max turbo frequency is the same, 5.3 gigahertz, but it's slightly different. So previously the 13600K can boost momentarily to 5.3 gigahertz, but now the 14600K can go to 5.3 gigahertz all the time, all P cores can just stay there at multi-core workloads if needed. So there's a bit of a boost there, whereas the 13600K only had 5.1 all core um, boost frequency. The PCI generations and lanes are exactly the same as well as the RAM compatibility, which is good because now the 14600K is the best i5 that supports DDR4. Well, there's, you know, i9 14900K that supports also DDR4. So, you know, that's good if you wanna just slot something in into your Z690 or Z790 motherboards. The cache is exactly the same as well as the base power, but the turbo power has been increased. Well, not on paper, but in reality. So on paper, it still says 181 watts as like the boost TDP. But when you actually run like Cinebench R23, you can see that now it's actually drawing a little bit more power than the 13600K. So even though I've got the multi-core enhancement enabled and all, you know, limits disabled, it's still not going to reach the 181 watts that Intel says it can turbo to. It pulls about 170 watts compared to the 148 watts what I've seen on the 13600K. So extra 22 watts, which is quite a lot and boosts extra 200 megahertz higher on the P cores. One more thing, the E cores max turbo frequency now is four gigahertz compared to the 3.9 on the 13600K. So extra 100 megahertz also boost in those E cores. The iGPU is exactly the same as well as the process node. It's still on the 10 nanometer process, which Intel calls the Intel 7. Now, some people argue that the Intel 7 is equivalent to TSMC's 7 nanometer process, so Intel 10 nanometer and 7 nanometers, they're very, very similar. But officially, I think there's still 10 nanometers and 7 nanometers rather than 7 nanometers, what Intel likes to call it. Now, the test bench setup, which is a very important thing, how I'm testing these CPUs. And this is how we're changing things slightly compared to what we've done 
previously. So now we are testing the CPUs with the exact spec RAM what the CPU supports. So for example, the Intel 14th gen is 5600 mega transfers supported on the memory frequency. So the IMC can go up to 5600 mega transfers per second. That doesn't mean that this is the maximum spec that you can run on your CPU. In fact, you can go a lot higher, but this is the stock configuration what Intel gives you from the factory it says that if you go 5600 mega transfers per second this is not considered XMP or overclock of the actual RAM if you go above that for example 6000 megahertz or 7000 or 8000 or 10,000 then it's above the spec and the reason I'm doing this is to also show you that the new generation of CPUs when they come out they come with a bit higher IMC specs so or the higher memory frequency that it can support and I want to include somehow that spec also to these uh, benchmarks even though the previous generation might be able to run it it's not for certain because it's over the spec but it might be able to run and I could run everything on the same kind of RAM spec but that doesn't show you the improvement in the IMC of the CPU as well said that now the AMD is running 5200 mega transfers per second the Intel 13th and 14th gen are running at 5600 mega transfers per second because that hasn't been changed and then the 12th gen is running at 4800 mega transfers per second or megahertz because that's the spec of the CPUs in terms of the other test bench setup I am using the Asus Z790 Pro at Creator Wi-Fi for the Intel systems I'm using the Kingston Fury beast 600 mega transfers per second ram but it's down clocked to these settings 5600 and 5200 and 4800 mega transfers per second depending on the platform and this ram kit actually supports export as well as xmp so some of the other latency or timings of the ram i'm using at the xmp settings but just the ram frequency is not going above the you know stock settings for gpu we're using the asus rtx 1390 and the cooler we're using fantex glacier one on the intel system with three fantex t30 fans on the radiator to make sure that the radiator is not bottlenecked by fans that's the best fans on the radiator as well as on the amd system we're using the asus rog strix lc2 360 millimeter aio with exactly the same fans fantex t30 fans bear in mind the actual pump and the block is exactly the same acer tech pump underneath on all of these even though the branding is different so both of the system get exactly the same cooling and both of these systems have a 1000 watt power supply the amd system corsair hx 1000 and intel deep cool pq 1000m plenty of juice for all of these systems now I mentioned the memory controller already or the imc but i want to go a little bit deeper in here now the supported ram frequency with four sticks because as a creator you might want to go above 96 gigabytes now we have 48 gigabyte dim sticks so two sticks can give you 96 gigabytes but if you need to go above that to up to 196 gigabytes of ram then here's a few things basically intel's standard spec now is up to 4000 mega transfers per second so you might not even get 4800 mega transfers per second with the four sticks and depending on the rank as well whether it's a single rank or dual rank ram on two sticks per channel and as you can see it's a little bit better than what amd supports on their cpus and that's why creators might want to go with intel systems as well just because the you know higher capacity ram support but now why i've said this is 5600 plus and 40 4000 plus mega transfers per second is because the 14th gen has kind of a refined process of the 10 nanometer process so they are basically like the ks or the best binned versions of the 13th gen if that makes sense that means that probably the memory controller is also a little bit better and intel does say on their like reviewer guide that we recommend using like faster ram settings even though the base setting is still 5600 mega transfers per second for dual channel it actually can support higher frequency bram kits for example if you're looking at the team group 96 gigabyte uh t create expert ram kit 
that has 68,000 megatransfers per second, then you're much more likely running that on the 14th gen than 13th gen and 12th gen and even Ryzen system because the memory controller is a little bit better. So if that is an important thing for you as a creator and perhaps you want to just get the fastest RAM speed as possible, then the 14th gen will potentially in theory have better memory controller than the 13th gen even though the kind of spec isn't changed but just because how they've improved and it's much more stable now and the process how they're creating the cpus you can expect a little bit better memory controller looking at the power consumption the 14600k is actually using a little bit more power than the 13600k but a little bit less than the 12900k and a little bit more than the 7700 x so in terms of power consumption there's a little bit of a bad news because it does draw a little bit more power but if you're already running a liquid cooler it's probably not an issue there let's start to look at some of the benchmarks starting with some of the synthetic cpu benchmarks only and cinebench r23 we can see that the 13600k is about 2.6% slower in the single core scores and about 0.8% slower in the multi-core score. The 12900K is also about 0.5% slower in the single core score, but about 13.5% faster in the multi-core score. The 7700X is about 2.4 and 20% slower in the single and multi-core scores. So you can see that the improvement in single core score is a few percent per over the previous generation and and then multi-core almost not noticeable increase in that. Moving on to Cinebench R24. I don't know if it's called R24, but it's 2024 versions of Cinebench. We can see that the 13600K is 3.4% slower in the single core score, which is a little bit more than R23, and about 2.5% slower in the multi-core score. So now seeing a little bit of a bigger difference between the single and multi-core score between the generations. The 12900K is about 2.5% slower in single core, but about 9.3% faster in the multi-core scores because it does have a lot more cores. The 7700X is 0.8% slower in the single core score, which is basically the same, and about 18% slower in the multi-core score. In Geekbench 6, we're seeing similar results there, but the 13600K has even bigger loss to the 14600K, about 3.8% in single core and 2.4% in the multi-core score. Interestingly now, the 12900K is actually slower in the single core score as well as multi core score. And that's probably because the Geekbench 6 can't actually test the multi threading. It tests per core performance rather than the threads because the P cores have two threads per core. It can't really test that. So that's that. And we can see that the 7700X, interestingly, is about 6% faster in single core score but 10% slower in the multi-core score. So that's because the Ryzen 7 has only P cores and it doesn't probably have to even out the E core pair core you know, score and then the P core score, which kind of draws it down somewhere in the middle, what we see in the 14600K, but all of the you know, cores are performing very high in single core compared to 14600K. I'm just guessing this bit here. But now some of the real world applications like Photoshop, and this is, Puget Bench Photoshop and all of the CPUs that you're seeing here have been retested from last year to see the latest software update as well as the latest support and bear in mind the RAM tested with these platforms is what I mentioned previously. The 13600K is about 1.3% slower in the overall score. The 12900K is 0.5% slower in the overall score but the GPU score is interestingly 3.7% slower. The 7700X is actually 0.1% faster in overall score and 3.3% faster in the GPU score and the filter score is up actually 3.7% faster as well. So we're not seeing that big of an improvement between the generations here 13th and 14th gen. In Lightroom Classic the 13600K is about 1.3% slower in the overall scores. 12900K interestingly here now is about 7% slower and the 7700X is about 7.5% slower. Moving on to Premiere Pro and here's another new test. Uh, it's a bit different than what it used to be. If you used to seeing the live playback scores, they are not here in Premiere Pro test on Puget Bench anymore. 
but the 13600K is about 1.4 to 1.7% slower compared to the 14th gen. The 12900K is literally on par, is exactly the same, maybe slightly faster in the standard overall scores, but as you can see, it's within the margin of error, both the 13600K and 12900K. The 7700X is about 10% slower in the extended and standard overall scores, and the long GOP standard score, as you can see there, is quite a big difference, 25% and 21% slower in the extended and standard overall scores. So Ryzen is not performing as well on Premiere Pro because of the Intel Quick Sync. We can use the encoding and decoding in there as well. And that's the same with the live playback performance, which means that if you want very smooth timeline performance, then Intel is a little bit of a better option there. Moving on to After Effects, the 13600K is about 3% slower in the overall score. 12900K is about 2.7% slower in the overall score and the 7700X is about 3.8% faster than the 14600K. As you can see, more cores isn't necessarily better. But the multi-core score is a bit slower there as well as the RAM preview, but the tracking score is so much better on the 7700X and that's why the 14600K is a bit slower and the overall score for the 7700X is a bit faster. I'm not sure why because the single core performance of the 14600K is better than the 7700X as well as the multi-core score is better but somehow the way the tracking works and how it utilizes the cores is just faster on the Ryzen system. Moving on to DaVinci Resolve and the 13600K is 1% slower in the extended overall scores and 0.8% slower in the standard overall scores. Generally just between 1 to 2.5% slower in all of the scores there, which is not a big difference at all. The 12900K has even a smaller difference, 0.08% slower in the extended overall scores and 0.6% slower in the standard overall scores. Bear in mind the 4K and 8K scores are actually about 3.5% or 3.25% faster than the 14600K. The 7700X, interestingly, is faster in the extended overall scores. I guess the 8 P cores are better than the 6P cores, what we have on the 14600K. Especially when we're looking at the 8K media scores, you can see the 7700X has 28% faster performance than the 14600K. But on the 4K scores, it losing out a little bit as well as GPU effects and fusion scores. So in DaVinci Resolve, again, not that big of a difference. Moving on to 3D performance, and interestingly, the 13600K has a faster score. And uh, this is actually what I pulled out from like a little bit earlier. So this is an earlier version of Blender on the 13600K and a later version of Blender on the 14600K. So the 13600K for some reason actually performs a little bit better here. Now, it could be a glitch as well and I expect the 14 and 13600K to perform really exactly the same in Blender, but the 12900K is quite a bit faster and the 7700X is about 4 to 13% slower in the monster junk shop and classroom scenes. Now moving on to V-Ray, another 3D application, and the 13600K is 0.35% slower, and the 12900K about 10% faster, but the 7700X about 12% slower. So here the multi-core performance actually matters, but we're not seeing a massive difference between the 13 600k and 14600k so in terms of conclusion here there are bad news and good news and it depends how you want to look at it are you the glass half full or half empty kind of guy if we're looking at it from the positive perspective then we can see that at the same time we're getting something cheaper and slightly better than the 12900k because if we're looking at the 12900k it's actually a little bit more expensive than the 14600k but in most of the creative applications performs better because of the single core performance as well as has better imc support right but in the multi-threaded workloads the 12900k is a little bit better so there's that if you really need a 3D performance there. But at the same time, 
the 14600K uses less power than the 12900K. Another good side is the better IMC support. So if you're planning to run faster memory, most likely it's gonna work better with the 14th gen. And also this is a simple upgrade process. We can just slot it into the 600 or 700 series motherboards from intel and it just works bear in mind you might need to do a bios update just to have support for the um you know latest generation cpus and another positive thing about these cpus is that intel didn't have to do this launch so think of it this way Intel knows that, okay, we've improved the process, right? And we could make a new generation, the 14th gen, which gives extra few percent performance to everybody. And we're gonna charge probably about the same as what we're charging the 13th gen right now. But when we launch this one, we're gonna actually deflate the price of 13th gen. So 13th gen is actually gonna go down in price because we've come out with a new generation of processors. So basically, for the same price of 13th gen a few months ago, now we're getting slightly more performance, but the 13th gen, if you were planning to get 13th gen, is now even more affordable, which is actually benefit to us as an end user or consumer because we're getting a little bit more performance for the same money and launching a new product you know sending these samples out to media and doing that that's going to cost intel quite a lot of money so there's not that much to kind of win for intel but just to maybe keep talking about the new product the new product is out there and i guess that is a benefit for the big company to look we've come out new things a new improvement and that's about the good news now the bad news or not so good news the glass half empty kind of news is that this really isn't a new generation of CPUs. This is more like a KS version of the 13th gen. If we're looking at what KS previously did on 12th gen, 12900 KS for example, or 13900 KS, then it's always given maybe like this extra 200, 300 megahertz, a little bit boost, binned processor that we get extra frequency out, but the rest of the things are the same, which is exactly what we're getting with the 14th gen. This really is a 13600KS with a little bit of a boost frequency, and that's really the generational improvement. Usually when you see the previous generation, it's between 10 to 20% kind of improvement between the generations, what we see, but we're not seeing that with the 13600K, which is a little bit of a downsider. So it's a not new architecture, not new thing of CPUs. And there's hardly any performance increase in there. Like within margin of error, you can see there. And the way I tested this is every test has been run at least five times. And then the average calculated on this. So we can see a little bit of a performance decrease or increase. Now, another downside is that even though, you know, you might or should get better RAM support with the integrated memory controller on the 14600K, the official support, which I would have expected to go up another 800 megahertz, which we saw from 12th gen to 13th gen. 12th gen was 4,800 megatransfers per second, and 13th gen is 5,600 megatransfers per second. I would have expected the 14th gen to have at least better memory support, but officially the support is exactly the same, but they just say you should be able to run even higher frequencies, which is actually the truth at the same time. You will see a little bit of a higher and better memory support for higher frequencies, but the base spec hasn't improved, so Intel's not exactly confident in raising the IMC, uh, you know, support to raise it to 6,000, for example, but it's not there. There's no new cores, and basically this generation is just plus 200 megahertz on the P cores and plus 100 megahertz on the E cores, and quite a bit more on power consumption, which, you know, isn't that big of an improvement. So generally, I think if it's a little bit of a disappointing, you know, improvement, but at the same time, if I'm looking at what we're getting for the money, I can see the benefits in there because we're just getting a little bit more for our money. We're getting a new generation for the same, you know, kind of a money as the previous generation, 13th gen, and the 13th gen is going to be pushed down in price even more, which means better news for us anyway. Now, if you'd like to know how fast can this new generation of CPUs actually support RAM, then stick around for the 14th gen review because I'm gonna leave that for, for that part of the review because there I'm gonna actually try to see how fast, you know, we can actually 
just increase the memory frequency and see how much of a difference there is if we did that. But right now, if you want to check out these CPUs or the build guys for the best bank for creator PC, then check it out in the description below. There's videos down there for you that you are going to enjoy or, you know, if your budget is anywhere from 700 to five plus grand, then there's a video down there. I'll explain everything for you down there. As always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video and meet you in the comment section below. Bye-bye.